everyone, I'm Peppy and I'm Yulia and today we're here to build Lucid VR haptic gloves. This is the final result of what we produced and we have a little bit of experience with hardware and VR but we've never built haptic gloves. So in this video we'll show you our process and the struggles that we had building these haptic gloves. So stay tuned. Hopefully you guys will want to try these out as well. We started the projects by downloading the 3D models from Lucid VR's GitHub page. We used our school's 3D printers, and in total, we used about five print bits, each being 15 to 20 hours long. We hence recommend starting the 3D printing process a few days in advance. Some of our prints failed because we tried to print them without support. Though the supports were difficult to take off, but overall, they made our prints a lot nicer and easier to work with. For the 3D printed finger end caps, we measured the diameter of our fingers pretty awkwardly. We hence suggest using a vernier caliper if you have one. Getting the correct finger end cap sizes also took us many attempts, especially because we underestimated how much space we had to add when wearing the gloves. Next, we built the spring-loaded potentiometers. As in Lucas' tutorial, we oiled the potentiometers with WD-40, which is surprisingly really helpful and satisfying to do, so we definitely recommend it. The process of assembling took pretty long, but it was also fun. The outer layer didn't clip on at all, which is why we had to sand down the inner ridge quite a lot. Retrospectively, reprinting them slightly bigger would have been helpful. First one done. Observations? Yes. That Lucas VR is kind of smart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have created spring loaded potentiometers, and they'll be basically on each finger. And when you extend your hand, it yeah. springs back. Now, we're assembling the gloves. This is how the gloves look now, with the fingertips and guide nose glued on. We now printed the wristbands in TPU, which is flexible, and we're taking off the supports, which is pretty hard because it's kind of sticky, so I would recommend printing it without the supports. Um, if possible. We tried that too, but our prints failed a couple of times, so this is what we're doing right now. Now we'll move on to adding the motors. Show me your glove. Nice, nice. This is my glove. The elastic band is a bit ugly, but it's okay. <laughs> Shall I help you, baby? We added the 3D printed end casings to the gloves and connected the strings to the finger end caps. We found that to get the strings tight enough, it's easiest to get help from a friend. Now, whenever we close our hands, the strings are put tight and the potentiometers are turned. Next up, we moved on to soldering. We soldered all the wires to the PCB board using header connectors so that we can easily test and change the wires if we made a mistake. We have now finished the PCB board and soldered all the connection for the potentiometers and the motors. So tomorrow we will finally put everything together and hopefully it works. Yes! Moving on to the code, we then uploaded the code to the ESP32 to test out the potentiometers. Okay, cl close. Nice. 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 One more. Yes, beautiful. So right now we are going to another building to um, use the PCs there because the open open gloves driver is not available on MacBooks. Another building trying to use the Windows laptop. Which is now I can't download. We still can't proceed because we can't download Steam because we're not admins. So we have finally found a PC. So we realized that we don't have the VR headset and we cannot proceed. A final update, we finally got borrowed a PC from Maya and we are going to try um, operating the Steam on this PC after <gasps> many attempts of not having a PC. Next up, software. Steam in combination with open gloves turned out to be quite the challenge. 
After trying to start Steam VR for, for two days, we are now in the driver configuration mm -hmm. and are trying to start this up. Where is the camera? Here. Hi. <laughs> so we connected all the finger and they all work properly except the pinky. However, when we pull the string on the resistor, as you can see, in VR it works. So the problem is that on my hand it doesn't pull the string enough because it's kind of a weird placement of the last roll mm. um, but yeah technically it would work if we would adjust the 3d prints a little bit right. and this is a demo turns out that another way to make all fingers work more precisely is by using taper on each finger so that the glove stays on better this makes the glove very impractical to take off but increase the precision by a lot and now even the pinky worked. Next, we connected the wires of all motors to the PCB and organized the wires using tape. While connecting the motors, we made several mistakes. Okay, let's try. First Three, of all, two, we one. didn't connect the power bank ground to the ESP ground. And secondly, for some reason, the motors only work if one selects Bluetooth as a communication method and not serial communication. Retract, yes. Yeah. We finally got this to work after, after two days. <laughs> One motor. <laughs> yeah. that, that sounds good. And now the force feedback worked nice. too. And extend. Huh? This is us experimenting with the gloves after getting force feedback and hand tracking to oh. work. Yes, that looks so good. Does it actually feel like you are, um, you are holding it? A little bit, not extremely, but I like if we would calibrate it better to our hands, maybe. That's cool. But it's very reactive. Hmm. Outro, we need an outro. So we successfully finished building our VR haptic gloves and it works! Yes, we couldn't pick up any objects in the in Steam VR, but everything else works. The motors work, the haptic feedback works. Yeah, so it's a win. The most difficult part was setting up Steam VR. It took us two days to get everything working because all the software has kept crashing and then we need to re-download it two times. And I think Lucas VR set everything up super nicely and the code worked really well. Um, we had to problem solve a little bit with regards to the hardware, but it wasn't too much of a hassle. Yes, we approve <laughs> Lucas VR. Well done. <laughs> Yay. Okay. Is that the archer? Yeah, that's the archer. <laughs> <laughs> 